We love you so much, Phoebe. Thank you so much for sharing your story on uh, not just what our church family uh, means to you, but uh, even how we should all take a step towards plugging in and taking a next step to be a part of this church family. We truly need this community. But Phoebe, you're a rock star. We love you so much. Thank you for how you serve us, inspire us on and off stage. I'm so excited as you've stepped in to serve as one of our team leaders with our B students. God's got big plans for our middle school, high school students together in the future. Let's open up our Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 2. We're going to be looking at verse 1 and verse 2 together. Um, I want you to know that this series, this change series, is really encouraging us to not only recognize the power of Christ in us, but to recognize, as we learned last week, the power of Christ through us. And we really want to encourage everybody to take a next step with us. This title of our series has been changed, and uh, we've kind of said change to something. Uh, the change to something is connected with our connect track. You'll see kind of a graphic. Um, we really want to encourage you to take a next step. Change to follow, change to discover, change to join, change to partner. Today we're going to talk about being changed to join. And I just want to just kind of say this before we move on. Um, listen, we've made this as easy as possible. You're going to find a link there, pgh.vcmvmt.com slash connect track. And we really want to encourage you. You can do this on your own time whenever. Everything's uploaded. There's a one-pager, a uh, kind of 15, 20-minute video, me in my home office, just encouraging you. Follow is all about following Jesus, getting baptized. If you want to learn more about what it means to tell people about Jesus, a great step for you to take. The next one, discover spiritual gifts and growing in the Lord to, to not only uh, recognize, discover, but we want to see those things developed and deployed for the kingdom of God. And so we want to encourage you to serve on teams within our church as you also go out to serve on mission 24-7 uh, throughout the city. Join is what we're going to talk about, so I'm not going to steal the thunder for today, but this is about groups. It's important for us to sit in rows as much as in, in, in circles as much as in rows. And so we want to encourage you to take a step towards community, much like Phoebe inspired us to. And then next week, we're going to talk about partner. Um, we believe at Vintage Church, our membership is less about privilege it's more about partnership. And so we want to have equal sacrifice as we continue to serve God and serve people. Look, at the end of the day, this connect track is all about knowing Jesus, growing in Jesus, and serving Jesus. So today I want to talk about the importance of being changed to join. Let's look at this together. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 2. It says here, you then, my child, this is the Apostle Paul speaking to his son in the faith, Timothy. I love that he says this. You then, my child. I mean, there's nothing cooler in all the world than sitting at the feet of a mentor or a father in life. And that relationship between a father and a son being poured into about wisdom and about life and, and enjoying relationship. I've got some incredible friendships that I um, cherish with all my heart that honestly they would call me their child in the faith. And, and I just want you to know here in this text, we see this beautiful relationship. Paul loved Timothy. He poured into Timothy. Here's this term of affection right here. You then, my child. For some, they might feel like this if they're prideful about who they are. Don't call me child. No, it's an honor to be considered um, a child of someone, to um, hold in kind of esteem. Hey, that person has claimed me. That person wants to pour into me. Timothy loved being Paul's child in the faith. So here's Paul's word. Paul says, you then, my child, be strengthened or be strong in what? It says this, not in my teachings or all that I've done for you. Paul says, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. 
And what you have heard from me, Timothy, in the presence of many witnesses. Timothy rolled with, with Paul into a lot of different situations. And Paul just remained faithful in preaching the gospel. Paul wrote things like, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. For to me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Timothy heard all this as Paul would preach to many witnesses. Paul tells Timothy, entrust what I've been preaching to someone else, to faithful men. But don't just stop there, Timothy. We, we can't stop. Listen, you've got somebody right now that you're thinking about, Timothy. I want you, much like I'm pouring into you, Paul would say, to think about someone else and then to teach those to pour into someone else. Look in verse 2. And trust the faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Um, this beautiful picture of four generations, Paul to Timothy to faithful men to others. One of the most essential and greatest relationships you can have as you walk with Jesus is a discipleship relationship. I know we can get all bent out of shape about the word discipleship and sometimes it sounds churchy. I want you to know it's extremely beautiful and, and it's really purposeful and it can breathe incredible life into your life if you would get into a strategic discipleship relationship. Of course, I've told you a lot about my family. And even this verse of four generations, my grandfathers came to faith and invested into their sons who came to faith, invested into me and my brother came to faith and my sister who came to faith. And now um, my grandparents, their grandkids have come to faith. It's pretty cool. Four generations. I think of my family when I think of this relationship, this text that we've been talking about. But I want you to know there have been some other people who've come into my life who've been intentionally um, discipling me towards the ways of Jesus. Um, let me kind of give you a list. First, there was Jason. Jason, when I was a little kid in New Orleans, uh, Jason just kind of took me under his wing and, man, he would take me out for ice cream. He would hang out with me. I had a little bit of an issue with a, a temper as a kid. Man, he loved me through all my hearts. I love Jason. I'm so thankful for how he led me towards Jesus through ice cream. I, I think about Bub. Bub was somebody that came into my life as I became a teenager and I moved into uh, a new city in South Carolina. Bub came alongside me, and I'm just going to be real, through burgers and bowling, he taught me how to love Jesus in a new city. I'm thankful for Bub. I'm thankful for Coach Fraley. Coach Fraley was a legend. He was an incredible legend who was uh, a point guard in college and and I went through an injury and coach Fraley kind of came alongside me and he not only fixed my jump shot so that I'd eventually play in college um, but he started to teach me that if I would seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness then all these other things will be added unto my life I'm so thankful for coach Fraley I'm thankful for Dr. Rick Dr. Rick was my my first official discipleship leader and I'm so thankful for Dr. Rick. I was like best friends with his son, David. But every Sunday night through high school, Dr. Rick invited me and all my friends over to his house for pizza and for studying in the word of God. I love Dr. Rick and I'm so thankful for him. I'm thankful for Gabe. I'm so thankful for Gabe as I went off to college and I started to even run from God's call in my life. Gabe was one of the first people to come alongside me and just show me how much um, scripture um, can change my life. And for the first time, I saw scripture really come alive. And, and do you know that God used Gabe to help me answer the call to full-time ministry? I I'm so thankful for David. David was my first professor in seminary, and he adopted me and allowed me to come in and journey with him and travel to, to hard places across the world. And, and he challenged me with this question over and over, Rob, how are you most effectively making disciples 
of all nations. You see, this is not about some robotic religious thing that we're talking about right now. This is about relationships. Ultimately, connecting with relationships with each other, um, two people, three people coming together that love Jesus, that love each other with the purpose of loving God and loving the world and with the purpose of making disciples who make disciples who make disciples. I want us to look here in this passage in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 2, and I want us to consider some discipleship essentials. Now, we're talking a lot about is this essential right now in this COVID-19 season or whatever. Listen, it is not possible for you to enjoy a discipleship relationship without these discipleship essentials. So kids, if you're watching this right now, you want to get out a pen and paper or maybe get out your iPad like my kids are about to do right now at home. You better be getting out something right now. And let's take some notes. I'm going to give you some alliteration, four C words that are discipleship essentials. The first is this, Christ. Christ. We've done this every week in this series. Listen, as we start to talk about like discover, right? You can't live for Jesus or serve Jesus without Jesus. Paul does the same thing here. What does he say at the beginning? He says, you then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And so Paul here is reminding Timothy that, yes, we've logged a lot of hours together. We've traveled to a lot of places together. But me, Paul, I am not your strength. Christ is your strength. The grace that is in Christ Jesus is all that you need. And if I can just tell you the first most essential ingredient to discipleship is Christ. Why? Jesus is the only one who can change the heart. Secondly, Jesus is the only one who can grow the church. Thirdly, Jesus is the only one who can save the world. There's a lot of churches trying to do discipleship, and I hate to say it, but they're more married to their programs than they are the person of Christ. We need Christ first and foremost. He should be at the center of any discipleship relationship. Secondly, we not only need Christ, but another discipleship essential is this, connections. Connections. We see four generations linked up together here in 2 Timothy chapter 2. We see Paul to Timothy, and then we see Paul encouraging Timothy towards faithful men, and then Paul encouraging Timothy to pour into faithful men who would also teach others. You see, Paul traveled all over and he invited Timothy into his life strategically, not just for Timothy, but so that Timothy would seek out others and pour into them with the purpose of those people seeking out others with the purpose of pouring into them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Anyone thankful for connections? I know I am. I know I'm thankful that, that those before us kept multiplying the gospel to others. Let's talk a little bit about discipleship and the significance of connections with discipleship. Here's what Vintage Church defines discipleship as. Discipleship is an intentional relationship where one disciple walks alongside others, connections, for the purpose of equipping each other toward maturity. So you might want to kind of think through this, toward maturity. And this maturity is in Christ with the goal of multiplication. So toward maturity, what does that look like? We want to have connections, not just for the sake of having followers on Instagram or Facebook or friends on Facebook. No, we want to have connections that help us grow toward maturity. God designed his church to help strengthen his church to continue to be on mission for him. And so who are your circles? 
Who are your connections? I pray that your connections are encouraging you to grow mature in Christ. Now, to be mature in Christ means that your head, your heart, and your hands are all going to start looking like Christ. And yes, we believe that you can go to Jesus and you can have a personal relationship with Jesus. I pray that if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, that today you would trust in Jesus right now. But God designed his local church for us to live in community. We need each other. Vintage Church provides two environments where your head, your heart, and your hands can get impacted by connections. The first is our worship gatherings. Right now I'm preaching God's word. Your head, your knowledge is being ministered to. Your heart. Then we have an amazing time of worship. Man, I love that song, Promises Today. We want to minister to our hearts through worship, singing, through prayer, through our hands. We want to give financially of our tithes and offerings, but give also of our talents by serving and telling people about Jesus. So gatherings. The second is our groups. And so we want to talk a little bit about groups. When we come together for our groups, I'm going to tell you about this in just a few moments. I want to encourage you to join a group. The head, we want to make sure all of our groups are centered around the Word of God. Our heart, we want to enjoy relationship and fellowship and, and pray and really minister to each other. Hands, we don't want to just have holy huddles. We want to be on mission. And so we want our circles to move. We want our circles to go and make an impact. I want you to know you've been changed to join. We have two specific groups at Vintage Church. Let me define them for you and invite you to jump on this group train at Vintage Church. We'd love for you to join a group and be a part of this movement with us. The first are our life groups. Let me define it for you. These are intentional life-on-life -life groups that meet throughout the year at various times and places that have the purpose of growing closer in friendship and with Jesus. These groups are strategically driven toward forming new relationships with people who have not connected with our church. We've started to see some life groups form at Vintage Church. I have a life group. I've started to get together with my neighbors consistently to play golf. Now listen, when we talk about life groups, I want you to actually not add anything to your life. What are you already passionate about? What are you already doing? Could be golf like me. It could be that coffee shop. It could be that restaurant. It could be some other hobby, going hiking, whatever. And I want you to intentionally start gathering with people, specifically right now that maybe don't know Jesus or that aren't connected with our church, and I want you to redeem this group. Secondly, though, we have V groups. And V groups are small groups of people who meet during a sermon series or season throughout the city for transformation. We accomplish that through scripture and prayer, connection, relationships and care, multiplication, outreach and sending. I can't wait. I'm going to talk more about it next week. We're about to launch our new V group season as we go through our next sermon series through the spiritual armor of God this fall. I can't wait. You're going to receive some more details. But listen, if you go to our connect track once again and you click on the join step, we want to hear from you. We're restarting our V groups and our life groups. And so we'd love to hear from you over the next week and a half. Are you willing right now to start a life group or join one? Are you willing to start a V group or join one? Listen, um, we need connections in our life, which brings me to the next discipleship essential ingredient, commitment. Listen, you're only going to probably get out of it what you put into it. And what we find here in this text is that Paul says, what you heard from me in the presence of many witnesses entrust to faithful men. Everybody say faithful right now. Faithful men. Listen, it's not enough for us to casually attend something or for us to randomly show up for something. We've got to be committed to something. And if you want to grow in Christ, I challenge you to really begin to discipline yourself towards commitment. I love the book that Richard Foster wrote called Celebration of Discipline. And he says, if you truly would discipline yourself, you'll experience three things. Liberation, which is freedom. Transformation, which is growth. 
jubilation, which is joy. I want you to know if you, you could just basically find it. If you find someone who's not disciplined, you'll find the opposite of those things. Someone who's not disciplined, I promise you, is in shackles. They're not leading their life. Their life is leading them. When you're truly disciplined, you actually have a ton of freedom. As I've been with the NFL, with the New Orleans Saints for the last decade, those guys who make those legendary plays are guys who've disciplined themselves to know the playbook so well. It gives them freedom. It gives them margin to create these incredible miracle plays that we watch on SportsCenter. I want you to know there's liberation when we truly commit. There's also transformation. You only get out of it what you put into it. So some of y'all really want to grow in the Lord. You want to, want to grow to look more like Christ. You've got to sacrifice. You've got to put time into it. And I want you to know if you put time into it, especially with Christ as the center, he wants you to be transformed. But lastly, jubilation. It's most fun when you're most disciplined around the things of God. And so I want you to know as you move toward pursuing a discipleship relationship, would you think about these commitments? Number one, an intentional commitment. You got to be strategic. When, when you really start to think about discipleship, you can't just hope things are going to happen. You've got to step out. You got to think strategic. You got to be purposeful. And if I can just say this, there's a lot of people in our church right now that you're just hoping discipleship will happen and that it will come to you. I want to challenge you right now to actually go and pursue someone. You initiate, you be intentional. Secondly, think about a relational commitment. This can't just be, yo, I'll see you once a month, or let's call each other, let's text each other. You got to go in, you got to build a friendship, you got to think about love, you got to think about transparency, you got to think about encouragement, you got to think about accountability, be there for each other through ups and downs, being willing to call each other out. How about an equipping commi commitment next? I hope that you don't want to just hang. I hope you want to train in something, you want to grow in something. So find a book of the Bible to walk through or a resource, or maybe you might be weak in an area. Ask for a mentor, a Paul to come in and equip you. How about a maturing commitment? I hope you don't want to just roll through something for four weeks. I hope you want to invest a lifetime because it takes time to grow. So work on your weaknesses. Think about becoming whole and complete and mature in Christ. And then lastly, a multiplication commitment. Why? Paul inspired us. It ain't about you, Timothy, and it ain't about you, Vintage Church. This is not for us. We're not the pinnacle of history. God did not send his son to die for us so that we might enjoy Jesus. No, he's not come again, and Jesus Christ has called us to make disciples who make disciples who make disciples. And so we got to have a commitment, not just to our generation and our moment, but to the generations to come. Which brings us to our last point. Christ, we know that we need connections. We know that it's going to take commitment. But fourthly in this text, commission. And in verse 2 it says, What you've heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Everybody say others. Put there right now, others. Remember, we've been talking about in this change series, as we've come back to gather one church in five gatherings, we're gathering, we're growing, and we're going. Check out the vintage pathway. This is the way in which vintage church makes disciples. So we come together, we gather, then we take a step to connect. That's a connect track. Then we become partners, but we don't stop there. We want to see every partner become a leader. Because leadership is about influence, as John Maxwell says. And you've been given the opportunity to influence people towards Jesus. So we want to equip you with our leadership pipeline to become a leader. But then we want you to think not just about getting a title. We want you to think about going out on mission. So send. Gather, connect, partner, lead, send. You see, this discipleship, and it's a central element of discipleship, is about commission, the great commission. 
For we've been called by Jesus Christ to go and make disciples of all nations. So as we close out our time in the preaching of God's word and as we get ready to worship in song together, our, our team's going to lead us and, and give us this incredible song set where we're going to just go into God's presence together. Here's what I want you to think about. I want you to think about these discipleship essentials. Number one, Christ. I'd love to see you grow in Christ, but you can't grow in Christ without Christ. So in this moment, in this time of worship, will you surrender your life to Jesus? But if you know Jesus, I want you to think secondly about connections. Who right now would you say is your Paul? Who right now would you say is your Timothy? Be specific. And if you don't have somebody right now in your life pouring into you or you pouring into them, I want you to start praying that God would provide that for you. But as you start providing for it, think about, thirdly, commitment. Think about what it's going to cost you. You might have to change your calendar. You might have to adjust the schedule. It might require a lot of effort. I want you to prepare yourself for commitment because we want to be mature in Christ and we know that when we really make a commitment to something like discipleship, man, it's going to bring those things we talked about, jubilation and liberation and transformation. But lastly, think about commission. Right now, there might be somebody that is not part of our church family or somebody in your neighborhood or somebody in the city that needs to know about Jesus and grow in Jesus. In this song set, let's begin to seek the Lord and ask the Lord to give us divine appointments this week to make disciples who make disciples who make disciples. And so, Lord Jesus, as we close out our time in the word and as we go into your presence through song and through worship right now, Lord, we ask for you, Lord Jesus, to embed deep within our hearts a passion, a longing for discipleship that ultimately gives you glory and praise. Lead us, Holy Spirit, as we continue to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen.